Number 11 from paper 1 of the 2015 New Hire. It says that this point lies on the circumference of this circle. Find the equation of the tangent to that circle at that point. So you've got this circle. I'm not saying this is the correct orientation or anything. What's the equation of this tangent? Well, it's got to be at right angles to the radius. So first thing would be get the centre and get this point, get the equation, the gradient of the radius. So the centre of that circle will simply be negative 8, negative 2. So the gradient of the radius, I will call it, will be the difference in the y-coordinates. I'm not going to set all that out. So that will be negative 2. Take away negative 5, so that will be plus 5. Difference in the x's, negative 8. Take away, so that will be add 2. So that's 3 over negative 6. So the gradient of the radius is negative a half, which means that the gradient of the tangent will be the negative of the reciprocal of that will be 2. So the equation of the tangent will be y minus b is mx minus a. So y minus the y-coordinate of the point, that was the point t, y plus 5, since it's taken away negative 5, will be 2 times x minus the x-coordinate, so it'll be plus 2, because you're subtracting negative 2. Oh, that looks like it'll work out quite nicely. 2x plus 4 minus 5, 2x minus 1. Now, part b. This line, which was a tangent to that circle, is also a tangent to this curve, to this parabola. You have to figure out the value of p, given that the value of p is greater than 3. Well, if it's also a tangent to that, then the first thing I'll do is I'll substitute it in to look for points of intersection. So that means that y, which is 2x minus 1, should equal negative 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus p. Bring it all over. That will be a positive 2x squared. Now, there's two x terms now. There'll be a 2 and a minus p lots of x. So I'll put that together. 2 minus p lots of x, 2x minus px. And then bringing the numbers, I've got minus 1, minus 2, but plus p. So that's a p minus 2 equals 0. And I'll put a wee bracket around them just to make that stand out, because that's a quadratic I've got to solve now. But, you know, it's a tangent. And if it's a tangent... There should just be the one solution, a pair of equal roots. So b squared minus 4ac should equal 0. So what are they? Well, b is the coefficient of x, so that's 2 minus p squared. 4 times a is the coefficient of x squared. And c is the absolute coefficient, the constant at the end. Multiply that out, square the bracket. Square the first, twice the product will be minus 4p, square the last, p squared, minus 8 times the bracket, minus 8p, but plus 8 times 2, plus 16. We're getting there, we're getting there. There we are, p squared. That'll be minus 12 lots of p. And a plus 20 equals 0. Almost there, which p's will give us a discriminant of 0. Well, p times p. Factors of 20 that add to 12, that's 2 and 10. Make the big one negative, that says they're both the same. So there we've got p is 2 or p is 2. 10, but it said p had to be greater than 3. So the final solution, and there's nowhere to put it, would be this. p equals 10 as p is greater than 3. There we go. Number 12 from paper 1 of the 2015 new hire. There's a little question about an integral. Now it's showing you an area, but what it only says is, what's the value of this? It tells you that this area is half a square unit. So if you were misled into thinking this represents the area all the way along, you'd think, well, if that chunk is a half, and these three parts are the same, they're going to be a half each, so it's one and a half. That would be true if it was asking you for the total area, which is an interpretation of the integral. The integral itself is just a blind calculation that evaluates all the positives and negatives. So when this evaluates, and it doesn't matter what A and B is, when this evaluates this function, it will count a half, 
then it will count negative a half, so it's back to zero, then it will count another negative a half, which means the overall answer to that will be negative a half. Now there's two marks for this, so maybe I can't really put that down, maybe I'd have to show that it equals a half plus negative a half plus negative a half, and then say it equals negative a half.